First, I'd like to thank our hosts for sponsoring this uh, opportunity for candidates to come out and be met. I think it's really important for everybody to hear from the candidates. Um, a little bit about myself. I've dedicated my entire adult life to public safety. Um, age of 18, I began in fire service, ambulance service. As soon as I hit 20, Sheriff Ray Weisnecker hired me to work in the jail at Putnam County Sheriff's Office. I've always been very passionate about helping others and doing right by my community. Um, through my career, I became a deputy sheriff, patrolled every street in Putnam County, um, became a canine handler, became a criminal investigator. You know, I think my qualifications are very unique, being involved in all aspects of emergency services. Um, one of the big things for me is always community, bringing community together. Uh, I think community is vital to law enforcement. In law enforcement, for us to be more effective, we need more eyes and ears out there. And the only way to really do that is to work with your community. You have to develop relationships with your community. Other aspect of that is bringing all law enforcement together, sharing information, working together with your combined services, and helping each other out. It just makes us stronger and better at what we do. You know, a lot of us hear about car break-ins and everything. Back in 2019, we went through the same thing. Cars were getting broken into all the time. They were stealing IDs out of the cars, checkbooks, credit cards. They were creating new accounts in the names of the people whose cars were broken into. This was called the Felony Lane Gang. If you Google it, you'll see this was a major criminal organization that ran up and down the East Coast. This is something that the Putnam County Sheriff's Office broke open. And we recognized how big this was. So we took this and we formed a federal task force. We joined with the FBI and we went from Florida to Maine working this case. And we took down a major organization that was making millions of dollars by victimizing people. Here we are again. This is happening again. You know, I sit here, I say, we work with other law enforcement. I'm just trying to be nice. We have two task forces working together simultaneously on this because there's two aspects to this. And I don't want to get too much into it because it's pretty involved and we will take them down as well. We did it with the Felony Lane Gang, we'll do it with these gangs. Um, we're finding working with our federal law enforcement agencies is much more effective because it brings more justice for the victims of these crimes. Thank you. We <laughs> <laughs> got our flesh. <laughs> Do we have questions? Any questions for the audience? Just today I got um, from this Hudson Valley News uh, letter that I get, um, you know, in my emails about the rise and um, normalization of gun violence in the lower Hudson Valley. Now, granted, they did not mention Kent. They mentioned Poughkeepsie, Yonkers, um, and I can't remember the, uh, oh, and some place, Newburgh. Um, are you starting to see uh, more arms coming in, you know, uh, illegal arms, you know, and gang violence um, increase in this area? What we're seeing is a lot of gang activity, and this relates back to the incidents with the cars, the ones that are stuff is being stolen from or the cars that are being taken. Uh, but I can say, since I took office, we've reduced crime by 50% in Putnam County. We've reduced opioid-related deaths by 50% in Putnam County. We have made Putnam County, and when I say we, this is everybody, this is you, this is law enforcement, by everybody working together, one of the 20 safest counties in the United States. I think that's pretty big. We used to be one of the safest counties in New York State, we still are, but now we are one of the 20 safest counties in the United States. That's huge. Um, the other thing, too, is domestic violence. You know, nobody ever talked about domestic violence. That's down 74% since I took office. So again, this is, this is what collaborative working does. When we all work together, we're better. We keep our communities safer. And if we all stick together, we just keep moving forward. We keep putting crime down. And you know, you're always gonna have a few that come through, like the ones with the cars. But I think together, all of us, all of you, do a good job. Do we have any more questions? Oh, you got off easy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't mean to be rude, but I. Oh, we got a hand up in the back. 
very basic question. Thank you. Can you explain a little bit how uh, your office works with, for example, the town police departments and the other public safety offices? Okay. So, what we, our agency is the largest agency in Putnam County. Um, you know, you have state police barracks in Putnam County, but that's just a small barracks. Their headquarters up in Poughkeepsie has much more resources. But for Carmel and Kent Police Department, we're a big support agency for them. Um, you're familiar with the ERT team. That's a joint team that works together. If Carmel or Kent has any major crime and they need a crime scene process, we send our investigators up there to process that crime scene. Uh, any major incidents, we will help them. If you recall, uh, probably three years ago, Gary Pietropalo, town of Carmel police officer, got into an accident out here on 301 and he lost his life. The officers in Carmel were devastated. Well, we need to keep them safe, so I told the chief, just don't worry about it, we got you covered. I put more officers out on the street, we covered the Carmel patrols, all those officers had time to grieve, get grief counseling, so that they can be right in their head and think clearly. You don't want to be distracted in law enforcement. It could cost you your life, or you can make a really serious mistake that could do harm to someone else. So these are the things that we do. Thank you. We have one more question. What is your greatest accomplishment that you've achieved during uh, your term as sheriff? My greatest accomplishment? That's, that's a tough question because I really don't keep track of my accomplishments, uh, it's kind of a, a flaw of mine. I just, I enjoy what I'm doing. And, you know, I think one of the biggest things is we keep technology moving forward and up to date. Uh, our computer forensics lab, we've updated all the equipment in there. We have more capabilities. And when you have the FBI come in and say, it's much easier to come to your office and have you process stuff for us than to send it down to Quantico and you're doing a better job at it, that's, I take as a great compliment. Um, we've brought drones on board you know, for rescues or for doing searches. It's nice to have the technology to serve the community. Um, we have a question in the back there. Sheriff Leslie, can you talk about your mental health initiatives? Uh, one of the things with mental health, as we all know, mental health it's not just a local problem. This is, again, another national crisis that we deal with. And more often than not, we don't see any funding going towards addressing this problem. A lot of people have mental health issues. You get that call for somebody, a uh, suspicious subject, somebody acting disorderly, um, suspicious person in, in, in a store. A lot of times, somebody is having a mental health one of the things that we're implementing through the state, and it's not coming fast enough for me, but beginning February, an iPad tablet will be issued to the patrols that go out on the street. So someone who's having a mental health crisis, rather than getting dragged out of your home, dragged to the hospital, to be evaluated, tell, okay, you're okay, you can go home, will be able to do a secure medical Zoom with Cove Care to do a mental health evaluation. 98% of the time, the people stay in their home. What's the worst thing that can compound someone having a mental health crisis? Anxiety. You're making it worse for them. So to be able to go in and say, look, we'll get a provider right here, right now. They'll talk with you. Odds are you're going to stay home. You don't have to worry about getting, getting taken out of your house. You don't have to worry about being at the hospital and finding a way home. You have a good chance. You'll be right here. You'll follow with them tomorrow or the next day. We'll get you your help. And to log in onto that, with them knowing they're not going to be pulled out of their home, is tremendous. The anxiety level is going down for them. Um, you know, a lot of the time, they just need somebody to talk with. They don't need to be ripped out of their home. So, it's important. And this, this latest incident with the Gabby Tito, how would your law enforcement manage such a case? With Gabby? Gabby, yeah. Yeah. One, one of the things is domestic violence is probably one of the worst crimes. Um, 
they're very violent. So there's a lot of passion in that crime that amplifies the anger. And the abusers are very manipulative. You know, they break you down to control you. They pull you away from everybody you know so you don't have contact with them. They separate you. And with that incident, she was in crisis. I mean, I saw the video. She was in crisis. She should have been spoken to differently. Um, there should be more inquisitive questions to get to the root of what was going on. And, you know, I don't know if that's all the video. There's probably other parts of it that I didn't get to see. But I just think of it this way. If you're on patrol and you pull somebody over at 2 o'clock in the morning, whether it's a man or a woman, and they were speeding, and they got kids in the back of the car, they're in their pajamas. What's going on? It shouldn't be. Do you know you were speeding? No, it should be. Is everything okay? You know, I noticed you have your children with you. They're in their pajamas. Why? It's 2 o'clock in the morning. Maybe they're just coming back from visiting with family, or maybe this is a victim of abuse that's trying to get away from their abuser. So you always have to be thinking, what is going on, what's taking place? It's not just what I saw, is there more to this picture? And is there something I can do to help to make it better? So I think a better job could have been done. You know, and I hate the Monday night quarterback, another law enforcement agency, because I wasn't there. But we can always be better. And unfortunately, sometimes we learn by mistakes. Um, does anybody know how domestic violence really got going? What was the big spark that actually made domestic violence become an awareness for law enforcement? Torrington, Connecticut. A woman was stalked from California to Connecticut. Oh, it's her again. Oh, it's her again. Cop pulls up in the driveway. Oh, it's her again, and she's getting a knife plunged into her multiple times. She lived. She survived. But she suffered a lot of neurological damage. Law enforcement took it a little bit more seriously but not seriously enough. And we know what the next step was that really made domestic violence zero tolerance. He used to play football, O.J. Simpson. Mm. And that's where it became zero tolerance in domestic violence incidents. So, unfortunately, something bad had to happen to make us better. We have, uh, <laughs> we have 30 seconds. I do have a quick question. One more, Sheriff. Uh, coming from the town of Kent. Um, always looking for partnerships with the rolling taxpayer. Um, license plate feeders. I don't know if the county sheriff has a license plate. I know the state police do. Um, but around off 84, especially with those gangs going on right now. Um, things that we all can work together to save tax dollars, but also to accomplish one of the better law enforcement agencies in the county and the town. Uh, but I just figured out license readers, um, I think, were important because they come up 84 or the state highways. And in, in a way, working together, uh, that's one particular uh, how you can help the town of Kent because we have our own police force, but there's other ways, narcotics. Uh, other different ways that the sheriff's office is involved. I know you know we have a narcotics enforcement unit, and you know this is as soon as Kent has something going on, and it's not about us. Oh, look at us! Look what we did. Kent has something. We help them out. That's their case. It's not our case. We're just assisting them, and they had a rather large case here in Kent that our narcotics unit brought an end to. Search warrants were obtained. Um, you know, they did, did a really good job, and that's because Ken PD brought it to us, and we were able to help. Um, don't care about credit. You know, it's about work, working together. LPRs were about to resubmit a grant application for $75,000 to get more LPRs put up in Putnam County. You know, again, here's a tool that can be used not only to catch criminals, 
but to exonerate innocent people. You know, because what's worse than somebody saying, oh yeah, they did it, they did it. I wasn't even there. Oh, do we have an LPR in that area? Let's see. <laughs> Boom. You're right. They were never here. So it could exonerate you from something that you're falsely accused of. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.